I want to introduce you to our next speaker, Tracy Rhodes, a native of Helena, Arkansas. She's a dedicated third grade teacher currently residing in Benton, Arkansas. With an illustrious 20 year career in education, Tracy's commitment to nurturing young minds is evident in her every endeavor. Beyond the classroom, Tracy's zest for life extends to her passion for travel. She cherishes every opportunity to explore new places and create cherished memories with her family. And this love for adventure has not only enriched her personal life, but also serves as a wellspring of inspiration for her teaching. Tracy's genuine empathy and caring nature are the cornerstones of her teaching philosophy. Her students are not just pupils, but individuals with unique potentials waiting to be unlocked. She's driven by a profound desire to empower and uplift those in her care, leaving an indelible mark on their educational journey. Please welcome Tracy Rhodes. Hello. Oh, hello. Again, my name is Tracy Deborah Rhodes. I first want to begin by thanking my family for traveling with me, and I want to thank Nick and Chrissy as well. My topic today is why you were made for more. Does anyone have that one friend that will hype you up into doing something together and then they back out? <laughs> well, that's me. I'm here alone today. My friend backed out and she said, girl, you got this. So here I am. Crazy scared. This is my first time presenting. So please bear with me. Quote by Nelson Mandela, it always seems impossible until it's done, end quote. This is a photo of my husband and I uh, in South Africa last December on a family vacation. I never thought my husband would get on the plane and travel out of the country, but he did. <laughs> this is our puppy, Marley. He's eight months old. No one ever thought that I would get a puppy, but here I am. <laughs> They didn't believe me, even when I sent pictures. They thought it was a teddy bear, so I had to FaceTime them. <laughs> the light bulb, cars, air travel, the first man on the moon, and stay on lipstick. <laughs> All of these inventions seem, once seemed impossible. However, what we've learned from this is that with time and passion, the impossible can become possible. Made for more. I, in my free time, I enjoy being a paparazzi consultant. Um, and this past summer, I attended our annual convention. Everywhere you look, you saw signs, posters that said made for more. Every morning, I would think of ways to use this in my everyday life, made for more. While drinking coffee one morning, I began to think, wow, the keynote speakers this year were really wonderful. I was inspired. I tried to incorporate this into my everyday life. I thought about getting a tattoo. <laughs> I had a teacher friend to contact me over the summer to discuss data. Again, it was summer. I did not want to talk about data. <laughs> but our goal was she was happy that we increased our scores from the previous year. It was only a small growth, but she was excited. Our goal has always been to help our school rise above. So that summer, after she contacted me, I began to think, hey, we were made for more than just being known as a failing school. My husband enjoys working out, not me. These pictures were taken before the workout actually got started. <laughs> 
a few years ago, my husband and I went running on the trail. I was afraid of the deer, the raccoons, whatever was in the woods. My husband at some point takes off running ahead of me. So I just kept my fast pace walking. I looked around to see if anyone was behind me and there was a seven year old woman who was jogging. In my mind, I said, oh, she's not gonna catch up with me. I could keep this pace. Less than two minutes later, she caught up and passed me. So I had to kick it in the gear. I couldn't, neither, needless to say, I couldn't catch up with her nor my husband. <laughs> now my husband likes to add the part where I wanted to stop and get donuts before I work out. <laughs> the thing to remember though, is not how you start, but how you finish. Now let's talk about those misconceptions and factors of a failing school. One factor in determining a failing school includes factors that are beyond our control. For example, extreme truancy. This is something teachers have no control over. I have a student who came to me last week. He was upset that he gets to school after my first class, which is the class that he's in. I teach third grade ELA. And his mom called me and said, He's upset that he didn't get to your class on time. Well, I took that as she was saying he was upset with me. And she quickly said, no, he's upset with me. So even after him expressing to his mom that he didn't want to be late anymore, he missed the next day. And when he came back the following day, he said, Mrs. Rose, I wanted to get here, but my mom said, no one's going to school today. Those things are out of our control. Some other factors to consider are the students where I teach, many of them come to school with op obstacles that other school districts don't have, such as an unstable home life, no access to Wi-Fi, or to use technology to complete their home assignments. So why do we give them those home assignments when we know there's no Wi-Fi available for them? Mental stress issues. And let's not forget the lack of food that is provided at home. Most of our students come to school just for a meal. Students are often judged by, the, by their standards. These standards are unfair to them. Why are we expecting our children to fly when they haven't been taught to walk or run? The other week I was getting observed and I was modeling to my students how to fill out a graphic organizer. The instructional facilitator approached me later on that day and asked why did I fill in the graphic organizer instead of allowing my students to give their input. And I told her that on the previous district interim, my students failed writing and I didn't want them to fail on the next interim. So I modeled for my students. She didn't understand that and so now I have to go to training on classroom engagement. She wants me to engage my students more. But little does she know, before that observation, I do engage my students. So we also have to look at those things. Teachers in their classrooms, are they allowed to teach? Are they allowed to teach to the test? The other misconceptions are bad teachers at the failing school. I guess I'm a bad teacher because I filled in the graphic organizer for my students. That's me being sarcastic. <laughs> Unmotivated students. Like Nick said, students have to feel welcome when they enter your classroom. And one thing that I like about what Nick said is, I stand at my door and greet my students every morning with a high five, an air hug, or a simple fist bump. Student Another misconception is students aren't growing. The neighborhood of where the school is, those students aren't gonna learn. Parents are not involved. That's not true. We have some parents who come eat lunch with their child every day or participate in parent-teacher conferences. Another misconception is very little support from admin. I'm gonna turn my page. Failure is a key, failure is the key to success. 
with the right guidance from leadership and a supportive staff along with the help of the community, these failing schools can be a turnaround school. They can go from a failing school to an A-plus school. Two of my former students lost their mom to domestic violence one year. At the time, one was in preschool and the oldest, he was in kindergarten. I taught both of these students in my third grade class. Can you get, guess which one of these was shown to those students their entire school, school year until third grade? If you guess pity and sympathy, you are correct. As a result, those students acted out. They were fighting, sent to the office, had low performing grades. But once they made it to third grade, the oldest, He's, I saw a major change in this student. He began to see more empathy and compassion from me. And so did his sister the next year when she came to my class. They realized they were made for more. They began to make good grades. They weren't in any more fights, skipping school. Well, go back to the fighting. The female student, she tackled a boy on the playground because he was being disrespectful in my classroom. And she said, I was protecting my teacher. <laughs> so that was the only fight she was in. <laughs> they were recognized for being student of the month, classroom helpers, and so much more. Why? Because they realized they were made for more. How do you define success? The definition that stood out to me the most was, one who accomplishes fav favorable results. Here are, a few here are a few pictures to tell my success story. So I was recognized as a high impact teacher for ha ha having high test scores in ELA and math. And here are some other teachers in the district. Now remind you, our schools aren't the A and B schools. One thing that I love about our superintendent is he recognizes our low performing schools for the small growth that they've made. I teach at Watson Elementary, and you can see our school went from 5% ready exceeding in 2022 to 10% in 2023. That's success to me. This is why I work so hard in my classroom, because I want to change the narrative. And by the way, this is the friend that hyped me up and said, girl, you got this. <laughs> I even celebrate small successes in my classroom. When a student adds a capital letter to the beginning of their paragraph, when the student makes an indention in their paragraph, have punctuation at the end of their sentences, I celebrate those small things because that's something I want them to do continuously. Being able to solve a math word problem, we celebrate those small successes. This is my wonderful family that supports me. Here I received the volunteer award for our school district. Here I am on the panel with other educators who were recognized for their high test scores. A note from my principal. Last, this is a quote by Tony Robbins. The real joy in life comes from finding your true purpose and allow, aligning it with what you do every single day, end quote. My why, my true purpose in life, I was made for more. I was made to change the world. Thank you.